I love to tell the story when I was in Bell Labs. There were these big, huge mainframes that were 100 feet away from me. They generated a lot of electromagnetic radiation, but they were far away from me. Fast forward to today, I have that same power in my laptop, and it's right next to me. Welcome to the Wise Traditions Podcast, sponsored by the Weston A. Price Foundation for Wise Traditions in Food, Farming, and the Healing Arts. We are your source for scientific knowledge and traditional wisdom to help you achieve optimal health. I'm your host, Hilda Labrada Gore. This is episode 101, and my guest is Daniel Debon. Daniel is an internationally recognized expert in EMF radiation. EMF shielding, and EMF-related health issues with a special focus on the effect of exposure from mobile devices such as laptops, tablets, and cell phones. He has over 30 years of engineering experience in the telecommunications industry, and he is the co-author of Radiation Nation, The Fallout of Modern Technology. Honestly, most of us haven't given a second thought to what we're being exposed to, but Daniel alerts us to the risks of exposure, and he tells us what we can do to minimize the damage to our health. Before we begin the conversation, we want to recognize our sponsors. As always, the Weston A. Price Foundation comes first. If you love them and love this show, please contribute to the annual fundraiser. Go to westonaprice.org and click on the Support Our Many Projects button on the homepage. And thank you so much. And Defender Shield. Protect yourself and your family from EMF radiation from cell phones, laptops, tablets, iPads, and more. Visit DefenderShield.com. Welcome to Wise Traditions, Dan. Well, thank you so much, Hilda. I really appreciate you inviting me to chat today about electromagnetic radiation. This is a really important topic, and we haven't addressed it yet. I want to begin with this question. You told me that your wife saw your sons with their laptops working from home, and she suddenly burst out with the comment, I want grandchildren. What was that about, and how did that inspire your book? It's absolutely true, Hilda. Four or five years ago, my sons, who were men, were sitting there having their laptops on their lap for hours. And my wife was watching and says, I want grandchildren. <laughs> and so I so I thought about it a second, and I have a lot of background in technology and standards and all sorts of stuff in this space. And I thought to myself, there, she may be right. And so we we said, let's take a look into this a bit more seriously and see if we can find some technologies or understand the problems around it. And what was really interesting, I found that there weren't many products, a market to protect my children. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us really didn't know a lot about it yet. I looked into the science community space, and I found a preponderance of evidence suggesting we know a lot about it, which all of us really didn't know about. So why do you think that information isn't getting out? I I, I don't know, Hilda. You know, I'm asked that question time and time again. And we are a community that has news reporting, Mm -hmm. and they're driven by factions. And you have the scientific factions, not well-funded oftentimes. Um, talking about one sort of challenge, and then you have the those who profit from the technologies uh, may, maybe having a differing point of view. And so as a result of that, we, we don't know much about it. But also, true, Hilda, if you think about it, the technologies that we have around us today, 10, 15 years ago, was not around us. Right. So it was not a big deal. In fact, it, I think it was in 2005, there were only 33% of the population that had cell phones. And today, it's 98% of the world. And there are more cell phones than toilets in the world. I mean, it's really, it's amazing how all of a sudden this stuff is coming around us. Now it's time to pay attention and see and understand these technologies. Absolutely. So it's a fairly new phenomenon. I have to say, when I went to Kenya in 2015 and 2016, I was in a very remote village bordering Tanzania, and the Maasai tribesmen I was with had a cell phone. You know, so <laughs> I know I have seen cell phones all over the world in very unexpected places. So it yeah. is something to talk about now is the time. And I want to begin, Dan, talking to the skeptic, because I know a lot of young men 
that put their laptops literally on their laps and or have their cell phone in their pant pocket. And how would that, how, let's just start with cell phones. How does that radiation affect us? If you uh, look at the scientific literature, it's very clear. With, within several hours of close proximity to the, the groin area, the male sperm count is reduced by 25%. When a, a young couple go to a facility organization saying, I, 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 want, I want a child, mm -hmm. some of the first questions now being asked by the physicians are, do you use a laptop in your lap? Do you use a cell phone near you? There is truly an impact to the a areas that are very, very sensitive in our bodies, and it does interfere with the natural biological evolution of those body parts. Damn. And that, by the way, it's true for women, too. Uh, wow. There was a large scientific study, uh, I don't know, five, 10 years ago, wh where they had 10,000 women out of Europe they looked at, and they found that with close proximity to to uh, the cell phone radiation, uh, there was uh, a two percent tumor growth, of which a portion of that was uh, cancerous. So we really do have data. So I was going to mention two things. One is I've heard that studies have been done that are showing that the sperm count is lower in the right. semen than it has ever been before. And so what I understand that doctors have done or the scientists have said, well, we're going to lower what's normal then. In other words, we're, we're seeing less yeah, sperm. Right, exactly. So we're going to say that you, you, everybody has yeah, less sperm. Did you uh, listen to the paper USA Today had a, an article that said the male sperm count is much less than the world's population. And it's because of heat from laptops. <sighs> do, you, do you know uh, electromagnetic radiation is a thermal emitting heat? And it's more much more likely the emissions from your tablets, your, your cell phones, are not only warming up the sensitive parts of the body, but they're doing biological damage as well. And so you don't have a scientific background, but how did you find these studies and start to become concerned? Oh, actually, I did have a, a fairly significant background in science. I, I worked for Bell Labs for 20 years. Oh. And I worked in their laboratories. And we used to do the standards work for the telecom industry. And we used to uh, define the standards for the telecom industry. Uh, and so that's why I decided to look into the literature, because the reality of it was I had a fairly significant background in the space. So I wanted to find out what was really going on in science. When I did, I came out saying there's a preponderance of evidence. I don't understand. We, we really do understand a lot about the impacts of exposures to, uh, to radiation. And, and by the way, Hilda, so what are the sources of electromagnetic radiation? Yeah, yeah, let's go there. Let's talk about what that stuff is. When you have a refrigerator operating with electric motor, when you have your hair dryer you use, when, when you have your, your toaster oven, being used. All of them emit extremely low frequency emissions. When you use your laptop or your router or your computer, your cell phone, they communicate into the internet or, or maybe to call your friend. That's known as RF radiation, radio frequency radiation. Mm -hmm. and, and so a point of fact, none of this stuff exists in nature. It's only what man develops. And now it's getting very, very close to us. And you have to be aware of those sources more than ever before, because they do influence the way we live and the habits we have and impacts on our health. Wow. And you're right. We are surrounded. I live in the city. So when I go to log on to my laptop in my home, I used to see a couple of, you know, Wi-Fi networks in my neighborhood. Now, like 20, I'm embarrassed to tell you, 25 show up. Like I have all these options, which I know yeah. means yeah, exactly. that more waves are hitting my place than ever before, right? Yeah, that, that's exactly right. Here's a story. Uh, over 30 some odd years ago, there was a chemical um, biochemist uh, who um, said, you know, it's not the fat in the uh, in the butter. It's not the stuff we find in eggs that's going to kill us, creating the cholesterol. Mm -hmm. He said, it's the trans fats that are being used. And so he said, I think we 
shouldn't be cooking with trans fats. I think we shouldn't be putting trans fats into our butter so it spreads easier. <laughs> That's what he said 30 years ago. Yeah. Do you know what? It only became banned this past year. Wow. That's how long it took to ban a technology that we all sort of embraced, but in the end found it to be dangerous to our health. Well, I believe even NIH, if I'm not mistaken, you correct me if I'm wrong, released some study where they said that all of this RF and EMF exposure is going to be for us today like cigarette smoking was in the 50s. In other words, people thought it was okay, like what you're saying. People thought it was fine, and then right. it turned out it was really damaging to our health. Yeah, I love to tell the story. The head of Mor uh, Philip Morris was uh, questioned by a, a bunch of physicians and asked, in 78, does a woman that's pregnant have any impact if she smokes? And the guy said, uh, uh, no, of course not, a except the, the woman may have a smaller baby. And what woman want, wouldn't want a smaller baby? Uh, you, you know, that was the mentality in 78. Now, all of a sudden, you we know, all of us know, it's common knowledge. And we know it because they lost in court. Mm -hmm. We know that this stuff is directly linked to cancer when you smoke. Yeah. And, and you're right. You know, if you think about, I love to tell the story when I was in Bell Labs. There were these big, huge mainframes that were 100 feet away from me. They generated a lot of electromagnetic radiation, but they were far away from me. Fast forward to today, I have that same power in my laptop, and it's right next to me. And it's emitting. The difference being, it's now very close to my body. And that's what you were just saying. Yeah. You have all these cell towers, these RF, Wi-Fi transmitters everywhere around you. Those things all influence your body. They absolutely do. And I want to talk about that. So we've talked about how these waves can affect fertility. What other health risks are we encountering when we are surrounded by these modern technologies? Yeah, let me, let me talk a little bit about when you have an exposure uh, th these these technologies they can actually heat up your the surface of your body. Mm -hmm. It's a, known as a thermal emission, mm -hmm. and they can influence uh, be influencing your electrical infrastructure. And, and so, when you want to lift a a, a, a weight uh, and you have a cell phone by your chest, you don't have as much strength, and no one even notices it. But it's literally true that is an interference, electrical interference. But the real big deal that you worry about is the biological impact, mm -hmm. the biological um, um, uh, changes in the, in the cell structure and the way the body handles this stuff. When, when you have a, a constant exposure to a, a very close emission, mm -hmm. um, like your cell, when you're using your cell phone to your head, um, you actually, the cell itself says, stop, stop hitting me. And when it says that, it reacts and doesn't share the proteins between the cells. So you actually start feeling ill. Um, your fingers may hurt, your, your head heats up, and it, it bothers you because of the heat. That's what's not known as oxidative stress. Uh -huh. the, the stress itself to the cell is now taking the toll, and it's telling you so. When you have a weakened cell under these exposures, you actually have a penetration of chemicals Actually, chemicals goes into the cell, and that starts a chain reaction of disruption within the cell. And when it does that, the cells can ultimately become mutated or damaged from a DNA perspective. And in a way, I feel like we should be glad when our body gives us signals. And yes. Because it's telling us something's wrong. Interestingly, some people just think, oh, I'm working too hard and I'm feeling stressed and that's why I have a headache. But it may be the very devices they're using that is making their health decline that's causing those symptoms. Oh, yeah. 20% of the population, almost 80% of that being female, uh -huh. are um, when there's volatilagamic com compounds in the air, they smell it and it really bothers them. Oh. That's as you pointed out, you, your body is saying, stop exposing me to that toxin. Right. Well, you're exactly right. When you're exposed to electromagnetic radiation, you, your body's saying, that's a toxin. Stop. 
exposing me. And your body's telling you, be careful. Mm -hmm. And I have a friend, and actually I think you're right, more and more people in the population are feeling this way, who is extremely sensitive to EMF and RF radiation. She will be in a room with someone who has an iPad on, for example, or whatever, and she doesn't even have to see the iPad. She can know it's there. And so she says to me, I'm the canary in the coal mine because she is extremely sensitive. True. But all of us are being impacted by those frequencies. Yeah, yeah, there's no doubt. Hey, and stick around. Daniel tells us in a moment what he thinks of Mark Zuckerberg's plan to make Wi-Fi available in every corner of the world. And he explains why he likens electromagnetic frequencies to bees in the room. We pause now to acknowledge our sponsors, the Weston A. Price Foundation. We are dedicated to restoring nutrient-dense foods to the diet through education, research, and activism. One project of the foundation is this Very Wise Traditions podcast. Donate today if it's meant anything to you at all. Go to westonaprice.org and click on the Support Our Many Projects annual fundraiser button. Give a gift of any size and check off the podcast box to let us know that you want to keep this show on the air. Our goal is to make 15000 by the end of the month. So please give generously and help us make that goal. And thank you in advance. And Defender Shield. Defender Shield is the worldwide leader in mobile radiation shielding. Tested by FCC certified labs, Defender Shield is the first technology to block up to virtually 100% of electromagnetic radiation from laptops, tablets, cell phones, and more, making it the most effective shielding for mobile devices ever developed. Daniel established this company himself because he was concerned about the health impact of EMF emissions, but he didn't mention it in the show because he is committed first and foremost to educating the public. After our conversation, though, he offered to extend a discount to our listeners, so I hope you'll take advantage of it. Go to DefenderShield.com and use the coupon code WISETRADITIONS10, that's the number 10, for a 10% discount at checkout. We, we know that electric hypersensitivity has been growing over the last 10 years. As we get closer to these technologies in our lives, uh, more of us are, uh, are saying, I really do feel this too much. And in some cases, held as you know, pe- people can't almost even go out of their front door. It gets so serious. I know. As and, you just pointed out. Yeah. And some people, I don't want to mention any names, but I think it's Mark Zuckerberg. Um, they want to <laughs> make it so that there's Wi-Fi everywhere. Dan, what yeah. do you think of that? Oh, I, I think it's terrible. I call that bees in the room. And we'll talk about this a little mo- bit more, uh, Hilda. But, yeah. but when you have one bee in the room, and, l- and let's say that's a, a, a cell phone. Okay. And it's in the room. And it's only one cell phone. Uh-huh. That's a bee. One bee won't kill you. Right? No. If you have a thousand bees in the room, a thousand bees will kill you. Yeah. And that's what's happening. You, you often find there's references in science to ADHD. Uh, leukemia, all related to electromagnetic radiation. And that's the bees in the room problem. The, when the more bees are in there, the more your body is reacting to that environment. Can you email Mark Zuckerberg? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, right. seriously, but I'm wondering, is anyone communicating these concerns to the people who are at the forefront of this movement? The World, uh, the, the world Health Organization considers RF signals a carcinogenic. They consider it a to be carcinogenic. The World Health Organization. Yeah. So this and is not some way, fringe group. This is not some fringe yeah, group. They're not fringe. And arsenic is considered a to be carcinogenic. <laughs> of course. So, like, and then there's um, organizations like uh, the Bio Initiative, where many of the world sciences have put together reports over the last uh, several years, constantly updating each year sharing their knowledge of what they think is the best in class understanding of the technologies and how it relates to our bodies. And they're doing a very good job. And this is really even the most interesting is last year, the uh, National Toxicity Program, which is a division of the uh, federal government, Uh they spent $25 million and they created an epidemiology study. What, What they did, they took cell phone transmitters And they had a 20,000 unit population of exposures. And what they found was, much to their chagrin, by the way, 
They, what they found was there was an increase, a 2% to 13% increase of frontal lobe and heart cancer mm-hmm. related to exposures, excess exposures. And, and so now even the federal government has a division, not the FCC. They ignore this stuff. But another branch, the, the toxicity branch of the government did find their findings a fact made it uh, clear it, w- it was clearly a danger to the health of all of all of us. So while you were talking, I just turned off the Wi-Fi on my, <laughs> on my <laughs> laptop Wi-Fi. because I'm realizing we are exposing ourselves and yeah. there is evidence. I want to put some links in our show notes so people can look at it for themselves yeah. that there yeah. are grave health risks uh, confronting us now with all this technology. But yeah. my question to you, if there's all this evidence, Dan, is... Why do some people say you're crazy? Why do people, some people, for example, they accuse my friend of being, you know, making it up or people who say they have these sensitivities or are reacting to these frequencies. Others accuse them of being off the wall. Yeah. um, Remember, it's a very recent technology Mm -hmm. in our lives. Mm -hmm. So like all of the examples we use, smoking, uh, trans fats, all those things, they were really in our lives for many, many years before it became generally understood that this stuff was in danger. So you have very much a mixed environment. But I got to tell you, women understand this stuff intuitively better than men. Men are slow. (laughs) <laughs> they are slow about this stuff. So I'm thinking of my friend who's very sensitive. She actually got a device to measure the levels of right. these frequencies in her home. Is that a good idea? And what is the name of that device? Do you know? Oh, uh, yeah. It's probably a trimeter. Mm-hmm. Um, that's what most uh, general uh, people, use, uh, you know, uh, lay people use. And it's a, it's a good indicator. What's more important is to know where the bees in the room are. Believe it or not. Well, no, that's what I'm thinking. Like, we need to know what's causing this issue. Just think about what's in the room that generates an emission. If you have a refrigerator and you're sitting on top of it, (laughs) uh, uh, then you should move because (laughs) there's a motor generating 60 cycle hertz uh, emissions from that. If you're using um, a hairdryer, 100 milligauss is generated by a hairdryer. It's a lot of stuff coming out of there, but you're only using it for a little bit. So you want to, Use it, but be careful not to overuse it if uh-huh. you don't have to. Uh-huh. Um, it's just a matter of precautionary measures. Take precautionary measures. Well, Hilda, I got to give you another example of something that drives home a little bit about what we're talking about. Okay. When you take a piece of meat and you put it into a microwave oven, a 2.3 gigahertz signal is generated. It heats up the water between the cells, oscillates the cells and the meat's cooked. You don't need to know what a gigahertz is. It's it's, it's just a number. But guess what? Your Wi-Fi, your cell phone, they all work around two gigahertz. It is a microwave signal. It is a known thermally emitting signal that you are actually putting close to your body. That's what that is. Oh, so it's like we're cooking ourselves. Yeah, you're cooking yourself. (laughs) And I like medium. (laughs) (laughs) We want to be rare. So let's talk about that, Dan. Let's talk about what are some practical precautions you would recommend to protect ourselves from these radiation waves? Pretty simple stuff. Time and distance are your friends. If you use a cell phone for two minutes and you put it down and you put it to your head after you and then put it down, there's absolutely nothing to worry about. The duration of time of the exposure is extremely low. And so when you get exposures, just be careful that you don't extend those, like don't use the laptop on your lap like my sons were doing for four hours at a clip mm-hmm. because that was exposures that killed 25% of the sperm. So, so if it was an hour, 15 minutes, is unlikely to have that biological impact. And distance, if you use a cell phone and you, and you put it on speakerphone, there's absolutely no danger. And here's a good rule of thumb, uh, Hilda. When you have something against your body, well, that's the maximum exposure that can give you the most potential danger. And, you know, if people you, do. They wear their cell phones in their yeah. shirt pocket or their yeah. pants pocket, and some yeah. women tuck it in their sports bra. Yeah. And that, you know, is modern science tells us it's already co- it already causes cancer. 
Wow. Um, and if you're one foot away, it's 80% of that danger is gone by four foot 98. So just by moving something away from you, reduce the number of bees in the room, you're really getting pretty safe. Mm. So you don't need a meter. All you got to do is know where the sources are. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's sort of simple stuff. And by the way, if, if you don't need it operating, turn it off. I have, for, uh, for example, in my, my house, I have a router um, and I have a little timer, $10 timer. It, I turn it off at night mm. on a timer and then I turn it back on in the morning so I can do my internet stuff. So turning stuff off, moving away from you and keeping time short in exposures are the simple, practical kinds of actions you can take to minimize exposures and dangers to your body. That's great because these are simple, actionable. Yeah. I want They're a hard actionable. one. I want you to tell me a, a difficult one. If we were like, okay, I want to go above and beyond. Obviously, I need to move, but besides that. <laughs> no, actually, I have suggested people do that. Really? Oh, yeah. Because I, I coach oftentimes. Uh, and when, when you have, you, you can take a, a fluorescent light bulb and walk in front of a high wire, a, high, a 10,000 uh, volt wire. And it will light up. There's so much emissions. And if you are less than 200 feet away from that, I would move. Because uh -huh. that's a constant load to your cells. Mm -hmm. And so, um, but um, there are some actions, other actions. You can actually shield these, uh, these faces of uh, 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 exposures um, to reduce that exposure to your family. Um, maybe we'll talk about that a little bit, but, um, oftentimes like meters, you know, big deal these days, Hilder is like, oh, I got a smart meter and that's an RF signal. Mm -hmm. And they're saying that's dangerous to me. Um, well they are, but if it's on your garage and there's two car lengths between you and the meter, mm -hmm. there's no danger at all. Mm -hmm. If it's on your bedroom wall then move your bed. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if it's against the wall and, and your head is against the wall, take your bed, turn around, put it the other way, and you're safe. Mm -hmm. All you got to do is be aware of where the bees are. That's all. I might, I might call this episode, you know, watch out for those bees or something yeah, about the bees. Right? Because yeah. really. It's, really too, it's a simple analogy, but it, it's sort of a very good coach for you. It is. It is. And this, is, this has really been helpful. So this is really simple and actionable. And I'm so glad you've come on the program today. Dan, I want to ask you what I often ask my guests, which is if the listener could only do one thing to improve their health, what would you recommend that they do? In this context, of yeah. course, is uh, take action. Mm -hmm. When I was talking about emissions, I was talking about standards for an adult male established 30 years ago. That signal went one inch into the head, a child that's six years old, that uses a phone, it goes completely through their head. Wow. So if there's one thing you should think about is how do you reduce the exposure in this space? And you will definitely know the difference over time. A child, you know, I'm old. It doesn't matter to me if it impacts me. But a child that has their whole life in front of them, you need to be careful. That's a great word of caution, and I hope our listeners will take all of this to heart. And I, I'm so grateful for the time that you spent today. So thank you so much, Dan. Uh, no problem. Thank you very much for inviting me. My guest today was Daniel Debon. To learn more about Daniel, visit his website, DefenderShield.com, or simply go to the WestonAPrice.org website. Visit the podcast page and look for the show notes for episode 101, and that will include links to resources mentioned in today's episode. Hey, and a big thanks to Podcast Village. They are pros when it comes to training, producing, and promoting podcasts. Check them out at podcastvillage.com. Interns for the show today include Cynthia Castro-Cohen-Enriquez, Joy Farrar, and Lily Hanth. Hey, and don't forget to connect with me personally at Holistic Hilda on Twitter. I want to get to know you better, and let me know what you thought of today's show. Thanks. Did you know that there are Weston A. Price Foundation chapters all over the U.S. and around the world? Chapter leaders help you find good food in your area, and some have meetings you can attend. Go to our website, westonaprice.org, and click on Find a Local Chapter to see if there is one near you. 
Wise Traditions is brought to you by the Weston A. Price Foundation for Wise Traditions in Food, Farming, and the Healing Arts. The content of this podcast is provided for informational purposes only and is not intended as a substitute for medical advice.